China has put innovation as a key driver of its economy, along with urbanization and consumption. But after decades of relying on low-cost exports, China's technological transformation faces many challenges. From inspiring entrepreneurs in a culture where startups are often marginalized to protecting intellectual property rights, today we'll have the latter half of the special report by Grace Brown on China's innovation challenge. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines innovation as a new idea, method, or device. But there are challenges to China's innovation-led growth. Some say China simply translates ideas that already exist. Indeed, China has many equivalents of Western counterparts. The country's biggest microblogging platform, Weibo, is one of them. With its hundreds of millions of citizen commentators, its influence and information decimation power is often compared to Twitter. Then there's Taobao, the country's biggest online shopping platform, which is often labeled China's Amazon. And Youku Tudo, the online video sharing website known as China's answer to YouTube. The Qin ICT Tech Conference is one of the biggest in China. It aims to dispel those beliefs, bringing tech entrepreneurs and investors together. Frank Nazakian, founder of the conference, says accusations of copying are simply due to a lack of understanding. I think China is already innovating like America,、mm -hmm. except that.、Uh, But the problem is that the Chinese market is so dynamic and so big that most of the companies which are doing creative things,、mm. they're doing that in China. And since there's a,、uh, an entry barrier for most of foreigners who do not speak Chinese and、mm. who do not read Chinese, they think there's no innovation in China. So、uh, they go to, to 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 Weibo, for example, or they go to to Taobao.、Uh, they It seems that the Taobao looks like Amazon, so they、mm -hmm. say it's a copycat from Amazon. Or they go to 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 Weibo, it it looks like a a copycat from Twitter, so they say it, it's the same thing. But、uh, it's just the 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 appearance. If you go deeper, if you're able to read Chinese and to to use the platform, you're gonna see how powerful and many times how more powerful these Chinese platform are compared to their. Western counterparts. Richard Robinson, one of the speakers at the event, says China's technological innovations could already compete with America's. Beijing is unquestionably the Silicon Valley. I would contend not just of China but of Asia, and、uh, I think in the beginning,、uh, you know, a seat of government, which is very important in China,、uh, a lot of the telecoms are, are here,、uh, a lot of the、uh, universities are here. So I think that's that's sort of you know what seeded it in the in the very beginning, and then it becomes this virtuous or, I guess, vicious cycle if you're from in a different city. But、uh, I, I think mostly virtuous that you know it just you know the the first generation, you know, Sina, Sohu, Nettie's, you know, they start graduating, you know, some uh, uh, some industry insiders that become entrepreneurs or VCs or angel investors or you know sort of part of that whole whole soup. A whole、uh, geeko system, if you will, and then just sort of feeds feeds off on itself. And I, I think it is important to have that geographical,、uh, you know, centricity where everybody sort of can, you know, serendipity can happen, where you can you can meet other co-founders and you can. Even if original ideas are introduced, protecting them is another matter. As a result, intellectual property concerns are another major hurdle for Chinese entrepreneurs hoping to protect and monetize their ideas. Last year, the commissioner of the State Intellectual Property Office, Tian Li Pu, reported China's patent applications for new inventions grew 20 percent. But despite more inventions, courts in China also saw 44 percent more intellectual property rights cases last year than the year before, in more than 83,000 lawsuits. However, some say this shows increased awareness and protection of IPR in China. One big, one of the biggest challenges is IPR. Right.、Um, But it's something on which China is progressing, and、um, in what ways? The application of the laws, because the laws have always been here,、yeah. uh, but they haven't been applied.、Um, so first of all, the application of the laws,、uh, 
Uh, second, because Chinese companies see uh, it in their interest as well mm -hmm. to protect IPR because they are internationalizing, so they need to protect their own IPR to go abroad. So it's a, it's a concept that they start understanding more. Mm -hmm. And third, because the Euro European companies have learned to protect themselves <laughs> um, in many ways. Um, so it's, uh, it's, getting, it's getting better. So IPR would be one of the challenges. Um, the second, um, I think it's, it's, it's probably the biggest challenge that they face. Um, other than that, there is a lot of uh, goodwill on both sides. And um, we have more and more European companies uh, that set up R&D centers in China because mm -hmm. they feel that in order to develop products for the Chinese or for the Asian market, mm -hmm. this is a better place to be than mm -hmm. doing it in Europe. Others say a lack of protection forces Chinese tech firms to innovate faster. But in other ways, I think IP protection uh, is not as good outside China as some people would have you uh, 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 believe. Attracting foreign investment is another challenge. It is very hard for an outsider uh, to invest directly in China and to understand the, the intricacies of the, the Chinese internet scene. Um, and therefore, I have so far not invested directly in China. However, more and more Chinese companies are now expanding abroad uh, and uh, are launching their uh, services uh, in markets that I know better, whether it's the US or European markets. And that's where um, uh, age of, uh, funds like ours can really be beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, so it's an exciting time. I think you know the internet uh, is becoming more global from a Chinese perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, innovations from China are starting to leap out of China um, as well as external you know, innovation going into the country. Once an idea is developed and monetized, exit strategies are also crucial. Um, I think where some of the challenge happened though is the distribution platform uh, have traditionally not been very good at working with content provider or, or small entrepreneurs, Chinese or foreign. And I think this is slowly changing. Uh, Tencent was on stage earlier are talking about the fact that they, are, they understand the need to nurture the ecosystem. And that's a new notion which in China seems to be making headway and which is very encouraging mm -hmm. for young entrepreneurs. In his report to the Communist Party of China's 18th National People's Congress, the then President Hu Jintao said technology would be a key driver in China's growth in the decade ahead and said the state should increase market players' motivation for pursuing innovation-driven development by scientific and technological progress. The need for technology-led growth has been reiterated by China's new president, Xi Jinping. Over the past three decades, China has proven its ability to transform itself in an industrial revolution and an economic one. Since China opened to the outside world in 1978, its economy doubled in size every eight years to become the world's second largest. According to Euromonitor estimates, China will overtake America as the world's largest economy by 2017. But quantity of growth has undermined quality. In 2012, more than 98 million people in China's countryside still lived in poverty, roughly one in every 13 citizens. Industrial pollution has seeped into all aspects of life, from the air to the water to the soil. Now, China is embarking upon a technological revolution, one that is likely to lead to new breakthroughs not only in the value of its exports, but also in agriculture, the environment and other fields, which could offer a better life to its 1.3 billion people. Grace Brown, CNC World, Beijing.